Hi guys and welcome back to the FSL Singapore Malaysia Indonesia qualifiers day number two game two between Dalgi as well as Kalisto <laughs> nitrous garage match yeah. I think we were calling it at the end of game yeah, number I one feel like this is you know it's sort of an unspoken thing like they don't really have beef it's not really like oh you know what's up you know it, it's, it's just caster like narrative yeah. here <laughs> like we we gotta sell the the views. We gotta sell the views. <laughs> so like, the extra, clicks. Extra, extra. The extra. clicks. It's the Callista Grudge <laughs> match, you know. So they kind of like the newspaper boy head kind of thing. But we are to pick some ends. Um, I'm gonna let the play speak for itself because I think that Taugi coming in like from the previous game, pretty clean in terms of what they they look to do. Um, they understand that Taney is the primary carry. Chloe is just you know put on the side lane something mm -hmm. good, and then Zuriel is in that position to facilitate that. So they tend to draft around the bot lane quite heavily. Whereas I haven't figured out what Callisto's stylistic uh, pattern is yet. Because it seems as though they don't really have a full identity. Even though right now in draft, it's telling me that they understand what they need to ban out. They're banning out Filios, Drama, and Morikaiser. These are key picks coming in for the side of uh, Taugi. What they did forget to do was ban the Orn, which is why they have to block in the Braum right now. Because Chloe, it's either Orn, Morikaiser, or Cho'Gath. Yep, and uh, MF Luckin from the side of Atagi. We're going to go over to Taini. Since we are on 10.3, were uh, some nerfs over to MF, I believe. Yep. Uh, most notably, her attack growth uh, yep. stat went from 3% to, I think it's 2.25. Yep, uh, percentage. Nerfing oh that no. attack speed a bit. Her Q. Oh, Varus. I mean, traditionally, we do see the MF versus Varus quite yeah. often but I mean it's 10.3 there are better options out there <laughs> so right now because you did lock in the Varus it kind of pigeonholes how you want to draft traditionally we see Varus always paired up with Tom Kench because that provides absolute protection Braum is like 80% ish in terms of protection right so uh, the rumble is let through the draft as well there's nothing you can do literally to stop the equalizer from burning the Varus on the back line because Varus is rather mobile there's no sort of movement or range extension that you have it's either you auto or you don't this becomes a problem right now. Like, you can't safely stay in the backline and do damage while standing on Equalizer. Second pick right now, I think you can literally just go for Nautilus here if you're not too worried about the bot lane. Otherwise, you could go for a Orn. I'm still willing to take the Orn. You can take the set as well in the top lane. Yeah. And this gives you a great matchup. Yeah, it's also, I mean, I think it also offers Doggy some sort of flexibility. I mean, they've got these set in the Rumbles. They've got. Double flex. Yep, exactly. They've got the double flex going on. And wow. And Nivea for Foxy would be interesting. We were uh, looking at her match history uh, in the breaks between the games. She's actually been playing a couple of Nivea okay. games over in solo queue, but it will be the Orianna for Foxy. What happens here is they've drafted um, the Varus and Orianna, which are extremely mobile, right? Mm -hmm. So now they have to ban out things that can catch up in mo immobile champions. For example, Leona. If you're not careful, solo flare and you hit, you're done, right? Mm -hmm. Another option like that is going to be something like Morgana Ban, where if you get caught by the Dark Binding and you don't have a way to escape, that becomes another problem in and of itself. So they will have to draft around this Im Im immobility that the Varus and Oriana, Oriana has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think something like uh, Nar might be good. Oh wait, yeah, they've got the rumble and set. Never mind. But yeah, so the uh, Oriana uh, as well as rest, it's really not a 10.3 composition it's that we're like seeing. It's sort of like a comfort, I think, is what they're going to go for. I think especially because when we were saying that for uh, Foxy's team, uh, they're a fairly new team. Not new in terms of new to competitive play, right. but more that they're not used to playing with each other, especially when we compare it to Doggy, four of the members from the old uh, team Nitrous, whereas uh, Callisto, I mean, she's row swapping. Back from jungle to mid. Uh, I think Corn, we were saying yesterday, is from the Philippines as well. Right. Vicky, their AD carry is from Taiwan. Uh, I think when we were seeing their scrims, I think a lot of them were playing, uh, they were playing normal games more so than scrims. We're really not sure how long the roster is at to play together. And so I think that's why we're just seeing a lot of very comfort picks. Yeah, I was about to say, they didn't ban out the cannon. This is a problem because cannon actually does decent intercept and it provides counter engage in the sense that. We are immobile, but if they engage on us, we have cannon to yep. provide mm -hmm. the deflection, right? So if they walk in when we're caught out, cannon's just going to pop the slicing maelstrom in the center and make mm -hmm. it a big problem. So I would have liked the cannon ban as opposed to the Olaf, because jungle pool right now, you can still go for a lot of things and still flex within your composition. For example, Sejuani does pretty okay 
if you're Taogi right now because you have melee solo laners essentially, right? But by locking Syndra, you're declaring this is going to be a Rumble support. Had they gone for the Sejuani, both Rumble and Set would have been able to set up the Permafrost with the Sejuani because they're both melee. Uh, now that they locked in the Syndra, they will have to find a jungle that's super tanky frontline. So off the top of my head, it could just be something like a Zac, which could be tanky. Jungle set though, flexing set into the jungle might be tricky. Hmm. Yes, they're going to go for the MF Tarik. Tarik, of course, because they're going up against the Varus. Yeah. So Tarik's ultimate, especially post that level 6, is super useful to deny uh, the Varus engage with the R. Right. So it's going to be a bit of a problem, I think, for the Varus Braum bottom lane. I do like what I'm seeing from both teams, though. They're actually actively responding and changing up their drafts mm -hmm. based on what are the threats presented. So the only reason they were forced into pushing for the Syndra and Tarek is because they saw, oh, uh, prior to the Pantheon locked in, they have this upfront uh, aggression from the cannon that dissuades us from walking in. How do you counter that? You get Tarek, you pop the ultimate. Because it's so telegraphed when cannon is there and you have the immunity from Tarek's ultimate, you can actually walk in safely and not really be too worried. And then the last response is coming in from the Pantheon in the jungle. It's like, okay, what do we need to do to get more on-demand CC and more global presence? Yeah, and I think uh, in terms of a team fight, I kind of want to say the advantage probably in team fights is uh, likely going to go over to Kellis too. They have such a strong team fight and composition with the uh, Pantheon, the Orianna. There have so many, pretty much every single person on this team can kind yeah. of engage. You've got the Brum, you've got the Varus Ultimate, Orianna, you've got the Pantheon Global, as well as the Cannon <laughs> for both engage and uh, disengage. Whereas for the side of... Um, Doggy, it looks like they're going more for a you want to win really lane. Yeah, they are top. Doggy's going to be playing yep, mid. Yep, top yeah, and yeah. mid, yeah. Uh, they're going more for the win lane, call the jungle in, and then try and snowball from there and just have that gold advantage and then hopefully win the fights from there. It looks a lot trickier to execute. I think it's really going to come down to how the first 15 minutes of the game play out. At the start of the pick ban phase, I was seeing how Doggy's sort of team dynamic is that they like to allow Taney to shine mm -hmm. and uh, pop <laughs> off, as it were, right? To pop off. And um, on Misfortune, you could do that. You just don't has, uh, have as high of impact as a Felios. That being said, if your team plays around you and sets up properly, uh, bullet time with Equalizer and you know the Showstopper is, is a big tool that you have to control fights. So I, I, I think all eyes right now should be on the bot lane as to whether Taney can get to that point. Because you still need your core items before you start to do damage. Whereas, I th could see anyone on the side of Callisto doing relatively well in their lane and then snowballing that into team fighting. If Cannon is big, that slicing Maelstrom is going to hurt. Similar to Orianna, right? The shockwave value that you have. Ferris Braum is still going to be very tricky because, like I said, immobile AD carries do not fare too well against zoning tools. In this case, the zoning tools are the Rumble, the Misfortune, as well as the Syndra. If there are orbs in front of you and she hasn't stunned, or use the Scar of the Week, Varus cannot walk up. So you can see that the issue right now is like, if you're Varus, you have to basically count on like two two hands, how much how many threats there are and how many things you have to worry about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Also, as Varus, you're kind of a shorter range AD carry. And then when you're going up against a composition that has that set MF, yeah. which we've seen in the last two weeks, the combo for that, uh, the potential for the long range damage from set MF is absolutely huge. Ridiculous. When you co uh, combine that with Syndra as well, Syndra manages to get a good stun off into the back line that's the team fight done right there uh for Callisto. so and remember that they also picked the cannon as and this is my train of thought i think they picked the cannon to play into the set in top lane and say okay because she's ranged we can control and bully her early on and suppress the power of the set but now that this is a jungle set yes you do less in the early game your value is still there as a jungler right now if the cannon doesn't come out ahead against the syndra so now they flex this syndra against cannon syndra has the value Set serves now to reset fights if Cannon decides to come in. Use the uh, superplex, as uh, Ellis calls it, and just take Cannon out of the fight, right? That's how this set brings value into the team fight. Overall, both teams, like I said, punching above their weight class in terms of draft. I think extremely cerebral, co cere cerebral coming in here for both teams, and they do understand what are the threats presented and how we play against that, how we draft against that. This is very good news coming in if you're like a fan of both teams. You're like, oh, 
should expect a very good game of League of Legends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, Dalgi even managed to uh, get that comfort roll swap mm. back for Klai. I mean, uh, she was uh, traditionally playing the mid lane, and then she was roll swapping to top uh, for Dalgi uh, for FSL. I think when we were saying at the start of the picks and bans, we are like, you know, you want to give Klai the comfort pick. She's not as used to playing the top side role. This game, what does Dalgi do? They're like, you know what? You play Syndra back to mid for you. Right. <laughs> because, like we mentioned, they banned out the Mordekaiser. the Kaiser. They early took the Brom, so mm -hmm. Horn suddenly becomes less of a value pick. And you don't really want to play Cho'Gath into these sort of champions, even though they are immobile. There is still very many windows for them to exploit you. So I could see the problem here. You end up just you know zero. You can go top. It's fine. You know. Yep. And with this that, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, Dawn has not yet broken. Jesus. There it is. We good. We Gucci guys. We are. It's a lit fam. A pause. Oh man. We jinxed it. <laughs> you jinxed it. It was going by. <laughs> What's that? For the, uh, the kids say nowadays, uh, it's tight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Billie Eilish yeah. from Bad Guy, I think. That's, yeah. I know too much. Yeah. I, kn I know too yeah, much. Jenny is like actually secretly a Zoomer. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. I wish I was secretly a Zoomer. I'm at like that sweet spot where I get to say, okay, Boomer and okay, yeah. Zoomer. It feels so good. Give it a few more years so you can only say okay, Zoomer. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay, <laughs> hopefully we find out what's going on soon and we can reconnect and jump in. I was all ready to do the intro for game number two. I was hyped and ready to go. I have, considering the draft right now, I actually have a, like one of those ironic things that I say. Yeah. That has now become a part of my vocabulary that can actually work into the game. Is so this like... You, 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 you know when it comes and wait, you appreciate it. Is this like, wow, like I don't have a choice, like I will appreciate yes, yes, it. Yes, wait, yes, what? Yes. This, is this like the pre-announcement no, yeah, for the it announcement? When it comes, just, just so you're it, soak in the telling me in advance that you're gonna make a joke it's not even i a joke. have it's never just like one of the sayings that suddenly fit in here i have never been less hyped to, oh. to hear a pun <laughs> 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 it's like do you know online like on twitter or whatever and then people are like oh hey guys i'm gonna make an announcement tomorrow at three and you're like really couldn't you have just waited till right tomorrow now. at three <laughs> fair enough uh i did hear a reconnect or a disconnect just now so i did it was very faint Dun dun dun. My boomer ears yeah. just barely caught the reconnect sound. Looking at the um, keystones, actually more or less what you expected. Apart from the cannon who did go for conqueror, uh, I would imagine Seven that you could proc it over time given the range discrepancy, but still, you would traditionally see something like an airy that the Oriana has for additional DPS with if your auto is as well as spells. Yeah, I believe the uh reconnect issue once again is from Taney. Uh two times in row, GG. Third time's the <laughs> charm, but two games straight. And the thing is, um if there's someone on your team that's having connectivity issues, you don't want it to be the AD carry, right? Yeah. Like you need to consist you need to hopefully consistently right click. It's like when you go into game and your ADC is like, oh, I'm spiking, and then they ping their pings like 1,500. Uh, like 300. And like, oh, GG, you know? Yeah, and you're like, why did you <laughs> even queue? <Yeah. laughs> GG, why, why are we even playing here? Exactly. And then go to hit, norms. Missed, like, the first full wave. Go so play like here, ARAM right where you belong. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's the. um. Go, why don't you just play TFT? <laughs> yeah, you see, ping doesn't matter in TFT. Exactly. Hopefully, we can jump back in soon. The previous pause took about. I want to say... Eight minutes? Yeah, about eight seven minutes. Seven minutes? Yeah. So this should be soon. Oh, the game has been unpaused. Nice. All right, guys. We are on the rift for day number two of the Female Esports League Singapore at Malaysia Indonesia qualifiers. Game two, Dalgi on the blue side and Callisto on the red side. I'm hyped. I'm yeah. excited. We're calling this the Nitrous Grudge Match. I mean, we might never see this game again. Grudge oh. match it oh. is. Oh, three-man. Being put together right now. There's a three-man stack, possibly a four or five. But um, the jungler is going to see this. Do they will it, be do very it. careful as they walk in. Chloe might just get caught, but it's going to be a flash forward. And here's the grudge match you're talking about. The Woo. first blood goes the way of Vicky. 
and there was not enough respect you have to think from the side of Taogi, the five minute stack walking in, you just back off at that point. Exactly. And we didn't uh, have time to say this as well. Pretty much, you don't want to go up against the level one team that has the brown because you have the passive, you land the Q, and then in that 4v5, even 3v3, even, it's just so easy to get the auto attack and get the brown stunned off. Yep, starting on the blue buff now. Unfortunately, it was the Pantheon that did burn the flash, and the goal was given over to the ADC, who didn't pick up anything apart from a longsword, which is a small AD advantage. So, when you think about the grand scheme of things, Korn is going to be uh, a bit more pressed for gap closes when it comes to ganks. That's not to say that Set itself or Set herself is uh, very mobile when it comes to making things happen. So, I think right now you just go for a full clear if you're the Set in tail lane and just play safe, you know. The respect of Bam, the grip. Set from the back looks like he stole Rakan's clothes. I mean, they are the same breed of. And uh, then they didn't fit. <laughs> and <then laughs> he's like, you know, I'll just wear half of your cloak anyway. Oh, you can see the winner's bike coming in already. Lethal tempo being proc. Taney has, has to be very careful about the spacing as they are getting chunked out a little bit here. Yeah, this is really rough because Vicky Racing got the first blood. Is pr is that whole sword up against the MF? So in those trays, you just walk forward, you just AA once, and it's so painful for especially like the early level one to level three. Remember that the range on Braum is ostensibly longer than it is because of the winner's fight, whereas Tarek doesn't have that, right? All you have is the shield and the stun. You don't have the ability to extend and threaten your range, whereas Braum, if you throw out the Q and it connects, like there is kill potential there. Which is why they can play so aggressive in this bot lane as the stun connects onto the Orianna. Electric Cube being used as well, but it will miss the uh, cannon minion there. Maybe a hashtag not worth trade for Chloe. Yeah, I like how defensive actually Foxy is going in this matchup. I mean, we were saying, we were kind of joking about how she might be getting camped this game by the mid. Yeah. By mid. She actually threw barrier. It's a very defensive all around, playing the Oriana mm. as well. It's kind of like she knows what's up or what might be up <laughs> in the this game. Scared, the full on scared one is you take Spellbook and then you take like two, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you just like, she recall, and then every time you. You have to use something, it's like, okay, I'm gonna have cleanse now, I'm gonna have barrier, I'm gonna have heal, like, they're, they're never killing me, you know? I love the TP mid strat, I think popularized in uh, Season 5, God V mm. over from LGD. He had the TP Diana strat, and then he put, kept, uh, took the teleport in, uh, on Orianna, so yeah. it was really what popularized the whole uh, TP on the mid lane. in the past, everyone just took a right? Yeah. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Animals. I took heal. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> the lane is actually going pretty well right now for Chloe. She can actually get a cheater recall here, which if you don't know what that means, is essentially you have you leave a couple of minions there, you base and uh, because you have the early Oh, hold on. Uh, a bit of aggression coming in. The Haymaker will take the Scuttle Crab, but having to flash out is the set here. Unfortunate, but maybe hashtag worth, depending on how you see this. Both junglers matching each other on the bot side, but like I was alluding to earlier, Chloe getting the cheater recall because she got back in time means she's gonna get a set of items and come back into the lane. So either Foxy has the base right now and lose a wave and a half, or she has to stay here with an uh, item deficit. Yeah, neither good decisions for her. Let's see what she decides uh, to do. Looks like, I feel like she's probably going to push and maybe head back to base. I feel like that's going to be the play for her. A couple of question mark things going down to, uh, in the bottom side. Although both uh, Scuttle Crabs were taken by Set. Actually, a bit a hit in CS, but does have very good vision control uh, despite that early death. Thankfully, Corn uh, didn't have flash up for that play earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So, had she, you know, had that summon skill available to her, maybe they could have converted on the Set. That being said, uh, they're moving towards the top side right now. Recall's coming in. It's gonna be the stalking upgrade here, so the chilling smite for the set. Meanwhile, Corn hasn't really bought yet. Doesn't have enough gold to make the purchase on the most likely chilling smite upgrade. Yeah, it's level four, so trying to go for the you know level three, level four pantheon gank uh, over in top side. However, wave is kind of pushing in uh, onto the rumble right here. So yeah, pantheon's just gonna Ooh. farm up. Leave top side alone for a bit. Set, meanwhile, though, did use the uh, plant to get some extra vision over into the bottom side of jungle. Dropping the control ward. Oh! 
I think she just want to pop that. Yeah, there was no reason to go for the invade because when you use the Scribes Bloom, you know more or less what which camps are up, and she didn't see the blue buff nor the wolves, I believe. Mm -hmm. Going for the Dragon Solo right now, though they don't have bot lane prior. Brom can just walk over to check this. You can see the pings right now. Oh, they're just very worried. And, this um, is risky. This is an extremely high risk, high reward, right? If you manage to solo this, then yeah, sure, you're fine. But if you get caught and the rotation comes in oh. because Oriana is pushing as well, this is going to be a problem. Oh, that was so good though. Vicky, <laughs> Vicky dropped the ward and didn't go past try. So with that, first dragon six and a half minutes in. Going over handily to Team Doggy. Your jungler's level, your mid laner's level six, you can burst the Pantheon before Oriana replies. You could have just contested the Scuttle Crab there. I think it would have been okay. Especially because Set is one of those annoying champions where it gets worse before it gets better. Like mm -hmm. when you drop to super low health, that's when you're you're most dangerous. So mm -hmm. in most duels, you're completely fine taking the fight. Right now, clearing the red buff and moving over to the Gronk, or rather, excuse me, Krugs. Yeah, we're about seven minutes in, and the uh, game is pretty even across the board. So uh, Kalai does have the CS advantage uh, over Foxy in the mid lane. We sort of expected that. Uh, and uh, Vicky, of course, especially with the early first blood, is more than 10 CS up off of, off of the MF. But the gold difference is actually only about 800 gold, uh, and at least half of that is from the first blood. Uh, so it is a pretty even game. Oh, uh, my die, actually. Foxy is playing super aggressive. She could find a chunk here with the shockwave if she has the mana. And uh, yeah, she's yeah. got the wave. Yeah. Okay, no, I'm just gonna back off. Hmm. Oh, set right here in the bottom side, right in the edge of the shroud. Both bot laners, uh, level five, but full summoner spells off. With the changes to the all all close, you could actually sneak into the lane uh, if you pass properly because you won't get spotted out. So, like the observer showing us right now, you mm -hmm. can actually sneak into the alcove and then move in. And then get onto the brush beside the core and Vicky right now. So you can see the core is like super scared. She's gonna ward that out because if Set steps out right now, that ward is gonna see her. Yep, Set has been level six as well. Yep, both bot laners, all level six, all ultimates available. Uh, don't think you want to look for a play if you are Callisto right now. You're okay back backing off and facing, but they are looking for the stun though. They're moving forward, very aggressive. Stand behind me by the core. Great chains of corruption to stop the engage coming in from Sed. Unable to land a face breaker means that they will not be able to pursue on into this kill. And just taking a look at the goal right now that both AD carries have should imply that you know we're fine exchanging blows here. We don't want to fight before our core items come in because that's when you truly power up. I think both of them should be basing with a solid 2,000 ish gold. Right now? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, also MF because uh, she didn't have enough mana, which is why we saw... Uh, at the start of the fight, usually you kind of want to E for the slow so that your jungler can actually follow up. I think she started off with a double up, but that was blocked by the Brom Shield. There was no E, there was no R. I'm not sure if she even had 100 mana uh, at uh, that point. So just some pressure that ah. Doggy was wanting to put on Callisto, but yep, no deaths over in the bot side. They're just gonna hit back to base, buy a bunch of items, and try <laughs> that again. Recurve bow uh, and Cutlass for Varus, whereas a BF sword and the uh, double this swords coming out from MF. So lethality uh, build for MF, and then- No, no, it's gonna be uh, Essence Reef for MF. Oh yeah. The problem with Varus and why you don't see Varus as much nowadays is because you're Power spikes per item is so much weaker than your opponents, right? You buy a Bilge Water Cutlass, which is almost the same cost mm -hmm. as a BF, but the scaling is so much worse. You basically trade damage for sustain, and you lose all your all ins because now Taini having you know the additional damage with her bullet time is gonna rip the backline apart. Yeah, exactly. It kind of negates the advantage that you have early on because what the Cutlass eleven hundred gold plus the recurve bow, it's a very different playstyle from what she was playing in the first six levels of the game, right? Because she had the extra AA damage. Now yeah. she's going for the attack speed, so she's going to have to stick in the back line and just, you know, farm, try and get those sneaky auto attacks off. Whereas MF with that BF so right now she's the one who has the AA, she has yeah. the better double up Q damage, which like, is crucial. Look at the way they're trading. All they're going for is these short blows. Uh mm -hmm. going for the invulnerable play. Though not, th I don't think that was necessary. Uh, maybe Migi and Taini getting a bit too nervous, not respecting the damage coming through as well. Meanwhile, Foxy is playing super aggressively. Like if you're Oriana positioning this far ahead, 
you need to have proper vision. Right now, all they have is two wards on the bottom brush and one in the top river. But when you posture that aggressively, it usually means you're going to poke and look for a solo kill. The logic is that if you do that and you're going for poke, you're not getting tower plates, you're not getting chip damage. All you're looking for is just, you know, damage on your opponent's health. They have to ward there, but I'm not sure they can make this play. There is no oh! mana on the side of the Syndra. The stopwatch is going to put her in stasis for now as she flashes away. Mew on the top side, the equalizer coming in. Multiple ganks from multiple fronts, but they will not connect on the kill in the mid lane. Foxy gets out safe. Mew on the top side. Boozy Life and Korn manage to get the kill onto Zurio. Chloe going down so low in that exchange as well. Really well played from Foxy. Wasn't too far forward. Uh, the thing with... Oh, Pantheon right here looking. Mm -hmm. Oh, nope. They can dive this though. Oh, well, there's no mana on the RNF, so probably not, actually. Yeah, they're just going to base uh, right here. But yeah, very well played uh, from Foxy. Usually uh, for set, a lot of things, uh, the way that set catches you off guard is just because he has such long range. You really need to ha be pretty far uh, in the back uh, of your lane to really try and avoid that as well as avoid the... What shape is that? Trapezoid of his <laughs> AoE damage? Rhombus. It's a ro rhombus. It's a rhombus. <laughs> a rhombus. I feel like... Trapezoids are just, they're, they're the same, not, the, not the same, but is it one of those like all hey man, squares or rectangles? If I wanted to learn geometry, I would be in class. If we were good at math, we wouldn't <laughs> have careers in gaming. Hey, is that what I, it is? I don't know what stereotypes you're putting forth, man. You know? <laughs> 3v2 down at the bot side yeah. set. Now he's just going to, yeah, so. he's going to recall. There's the dragon, so they really just want to get some uh, vision. Pantheon's there as well. It's going to drop the control war and disable the I, I'm blue. I'm not sold on the set jungle because they aren't playing around it as well as I, I would like. They're trying. Yeah. Like We've been seeing them try to go for that good uh, map movements, those trades. It's always about the dueling with set. That's the thing. Though. You're always looking for 1v1s and 2v2s because you excel so well at dueling. But... The team has not been playing around, you know, getting lane prior, allowing the set to walk in and fight against the Pantheon. I feel like for this uh, game, especially just because of the level one and the way set was uh, put behind Maybe, uh, by yeah. giving up first blood, I think, you know, we have to cut them some slack here. They probably di uh, definitely w didn't plan for that to happen. You can see just in the way that they've been playing, they kind of know how they should be playing it. But I mean, you know, in the uh, bot lane, for example, when Varus had mm. that uh, sword hit, it was a bit difficult. A bit of a difficult situation for Set to really make things happen. As it stands, the items are being completed right now. We see the haunting guys for the rumble. He wants a proto belt. Early way for the cannon to push her advantage in the lane by getting additional mobility and damage. Junglers will pick up both the chilling smites as uh, Set goes tanky and Pantheon goes damage. With yeah, the warrior, I'm really excited to see the first fight. Big team fight. Literally just fight here. Even though the shockwave catches Chloe out, she's already very low. Having to flash away, will get caught out. Here comes the showstopper, but it's uh, Set alone against three people as the Haymaker comes in and there comes the equalizer as well to make the fight a bit more equal, but you have to think it's a little too late. Zurio now getting caught out as the flash comes in from Boozy Life to CC her up. Great star fall might be pointed in the wrong direction as Zurio is now going to get stunned up and picked off. And those are three very quick kills being picked up. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Miggy is going to fall. She did not know her damage ranges properly and Vicky somehow manage manages to find a kill. Yeah, she died. Uh, Miggy died with the Tarek ultimate up. Uh, Decor using both Flash and Ignite kind of signals to us that was a really aggressive uh, exchange uh, from Vicky as well as Decor. Probably Flash forward from Braum into the ultimate, into the Varus ultimate uh, as well. Braum was on, on the top side. So oh yeah, Braum was on the top side. Yeah, and Taini used the heal as well. <laughs> yeah, things are not going these way at all. In fact, I, on a personal note, I feel they've been too um, hesitant and reluctant to fight early on. And now, because the gold advantage, you know, swinging for three and a half k in favor of Callisto, they can actually press their AOE composition. We we're talking about how they have so many tools to fight effectively in uh, choke points as well as uh, team fights. Yeah, this is the dream scenario if you are uh, Callisto right now. You have the perfect amount of gold as well as objectives to trade for. Exactly, and plus they even got the Herald mm -hmm. off of the kills over in the top side yeah. of river, so that gold difference is only going to grow. 6 and 0 is the kill score. Kalisto haven't managed yet to pick up the tower, but with uh, this Shelly pickup, it's going to be a matter of time. The perfect sequence of events right now, if you are 
the Pantheon is you go bot lane, get an early lead, or excuse me, not get early lead, get a kill, and then pop the Herald down, take the bot tier 1, then swap the AD carry support to the top side, so you can play for the Nyx Herald, or at least the Nyx structure. I don't think there'll be enough time for Herald number 2, but essentially you want to open up the bot lane and then force a swap into the top side. Sat once again with that sneaky pathing into the alcove. Gonna pop the scrying, make sure there's no ward there. Are they baiting this? It looks like they are baiting this as uh, Winner's Bite is gonna seal past. Oriana already making advanced moves towards the bot lane, and remember that Pantheon has a global out that's gonna be up in a couple of seconds, so you might wanna think twice about this, and I think uh, Taogi understanding that, knowing this might not be the best time to pull the trigger. You might wanna back off. Yeah, we're gonna head him back towards oh, the in lane. though. We can make the pay play a great phrase breaker. Brings both the AD carry and support back in. And with the Glacial Fissure though, they're jumping into the range of the turret. That out is not off yet, so the vulnerability is only gonna catch Miki. And this is no! going sideways completely. For the side of Taogi, they're gonna get caught out and finished off. And Zuru coming in too little, too late. Expanding the teleport as well. Might have been a mistake here as Boozy Life now gets free roam of the top tier one. Misfiring on all cylinders right now. You just have to think that was a miscommunication coming through from the side of Aldi. Yeah, definitely a miscommunication. Tini tried so hard as well. She tried to get the last uh, Q or auto attack down onto the Brown, uh, but wasn't able to do that. And gave up her life. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah she yep, she she'll definitely. Here. Yep, she's going down. Use the equalizer as well. And the thing is, it's past the 14 minute mark, so you don't need to be worrying about giving up your plate gold uh, over to Kalis. Oh. So, kind of a wasted teleport uh, from Zerio, to be honest, right now. Corn and Foxy. Both flash, land a stun, as well as the Q, and a delayed flash from Chloe means that she will go into the death chamber. And yeah, very nice bait uh, from the side of Callisto because uh, Foxy was so low in health, so which is kind of why Chloe stuck around in lane, but really all Foxy was doing was waiting for the backup. Uh, of corn uh, to pick up that very easy kill. I want to talk about how because the lane swap came in pre-game, they realized Zuriel should go top, Chloe should play mid. On multiple fronts, the success that they found with the mid-jungle synergy in the previous game doesn't exist anymore. In fact, it's almost uh, the inverse of that. They've been having miscommunication issues this time, and you have to think a lot of that might just be from the issues of swapping the lane. Maybe they haven't practiced this way long enough, and as such, there are issues coming up as to who's shot calling and how the map is being played in relation to the role swap. Right now, Ocean Dragon is going to go over to Callisto as they look to push down, and right now, Blade of the Ring King and Green Suit is completed. So, all I was talking about the item differential between the Village Water right now versus you know the BS Ward. When you have two items up, it doesn't really matter. You can just walk in, and now that Foxy is here as well, you can press the issue. You can look to make the play happen, and they can't do much to defend against this. Oh, stun that couldn't connect onto Viking. Yeah, talking about the item differential, I mean, just taking a look at the AD carries, Essence Reaver, Greaves versus the Gwinsus and the Blade of the Rune King. That's yeah. actually a ridiculous uh, a difference. Huge difference. Exactly. I mean, Blade of the Rune King, bad enough onto Varus, and then when you get the Gwinsus <laughs> to stack it with that, it's absolutely huge. The upside, though, is that uh, if and when Doggy do manage to get the kill onto Varus right now, he's 5 one they're going to be banking in the 600 gold bounty. That will really help them try to come back in this game. But as it stands, they're about 7,000 gold behind. Clyde once again, uh, a bit of a met, uh, man disadvantage. Yep. Brahm as well is clearing vision over on the sides as like a 3 versus a Syndra situation right now. They could oh actually no! find the player for this, but while well, doing a lot of damage, Equalizer on the back line barely does anything to Korra as the face breaker pulls the Pantheon back in. Here comes the Suplex and they will get the shutdown eventually in this small choke point. Looking for a bit more as the Shockwave completely whips is Foxy. Now Set joining into the fight with the ultimate was what made the difference and they managed to bank in on the Pantheon. Finally finding their first kill for the game. 20 minutes in. They finally put themselves on the scoreboard. And Taogi though, still in a big, big deficit. Looking to climb out. 6,000 is the differential right now. Yeah, although it's good for them that the kill went on to the MF. Just because Syndra so far, she's 0 and 2. She's been behind uh, the entire game. And as we were saying in uh, Picks and Bands, if you're counting on one person to really want to carry the Doggy team to the next game victory, it's going to be Taney on the MF. Good Chains of Corruption is denied though by the Scare of the Week. Here comes the ultimate, but a little too late once more. Miki 
with these delayed ultimates, it has been costing her team so much. Oh, and now, it's no. gonna be a double pick up. And the Grand Starfall used just for a bit more safety. That's just easy Blade of the Ruin King uh, Varus for you right yeah. there. Pops the BOTRK, AAs you, gets that life steal, and that's just uh, easy rotation into the Baron the for Team Killisto. This Baron is gonna go down so quickly right mm -hmm. now with the Blade of the Ruin King Green Tooth because Varus does percentage damage. Every time you pop the marks, it's additional percentage damage. And right now, this is going down to slightly less than 5k. There is opportunity for the set to steal this. No showstopper means that they will not be able to get into a pit in time, but might be able to get there with the Haymaker. No, the Smite is a bit early, but eventually the Varus will claim it. Here comes the Equalizer, though. They're looking for a bit more, and immediately pop in the back line. Taney is not going to survive for long. Oh. In fact, Vicky still stands. Zuriel now will get Stunned up by the winner's bite, then this should be an extremely dead rumble. Yeah. It's a desperation play. That was all it was in the Baron pit, and unfortunately, they did not find a way back into the game. Now, 10,000 gold behind. Yeah, things are really rough for Dal. You were saying in the picks and bans about how um, the composition that they picked is difficult to execute, and also it counts uh, on the them actually getting that individual lead in their yeah. lanes we've seen in the first 15 minutes that absolutely did not happen right now at 22 minutes they're behind and the thing with their composition is it's so hard to execute right now at this point because their big problem is the Varus right on the side of Callisto the thing is they have no one on their team that can actually CC lock down the Varus for them to actually be able to try and kill him in the back line They've, they're running the Rumble yeah. the Syndra the Tarek and you look at the stuns from Syndra and Tarek they're either delayed stuns or you're there to um so right now the problem is Migi's ultimates and I'll be very critical here have not been good. Like you need to ultimate with uh, you need to use Tarek's ultimate to kind of buy space, not reactionary. Right? It has to be used preemptively. And because it's coming out too late, they're using the equalizer to dissuade the fights as opposed to counter engage the fights. Mm -hmm. It's like when you're taking too much damage, the immediate call is okay, we're gonna equalize it so we can back off instead of using ultimate to say, okay, now we're invulnerable, we go forward. let's go forward and take yep. the fight. Dream ambush coming out from Callisto. Oh. Set flashing over the wall. He's a pick on the fight, but already getting outside the range of the bullet time. The Shockwave is only going to catch Zuriel here as they chase on the back line. And this is what we were saying. If they can go forward, there's opportunity. This is a pretty decent Tarek ultimate that might allow them to turn the tides of the fight. Remember, all the big ticket ultimates have been down except for the Slicing Maelstrom, which is going to come in from a massive flank and pick up two members. And right there, Vicky gets the kill credit for the Tarek and you were not counting on Boozy Life with the magnificent entry into that fight. That was the Smeb Cannon ultimate <laughs> right there. <laughs> Whew, what a tie turner for that. I mean, as you were saying, Dalgi had that very good engage. I think, you know, despite the fact that they uh, they were 10,000 gold down, they absolutely did not give up. We saw the very aggressive flash from set over the wall into the Tarek ultimate, as you were saying, the setup uh, from Dalgi, but it just was kind of a bit too little too late uh, for them at this point. Yeah, the gold differential now jumping to about 12 and a half. It's growing pretty quickly. Every two, three minutes is an increase of 2,000, which becomes a big problem because now the items are starting to speak for themselves, right? You could have or at least be caught in a difficult position, but your items are going to make up for the differential, and we saw that happen previously. Yeah, this is really rough. I mean, MF, she's still Essence Reaver and then building into the IE components, whereas Varus actually RFC. just completed his RFC as well. He's going to be the Rune King, Gwinsus, and RFC. Three items. Didn't even bother with the Greaves with completing his boots oh, the just Greaves. yet. If you're going to die, you're going to die. Like, the movement speed makes literally exactly. no difference, right? So, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> In my head, it's like, yeah, okay, fine. Now you finish it, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> but the early upfront power from the completed items mm -hmm. so much more, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. All right, how so Emma's got the IE, finally. Yeah, how does uh, Talgi get back in? In my head, I think a perfect bullet time coming in from the Misfortune might be able to turn the tides, but we have to keep our eyes on Miggy, right? The ultimate from Miggy is so crucial. The Cosmic Radiance, if you can land it, in the right position and allow your team to walk forward with the equalizer that is what allows you to turn the tides but if you use it reactionarily and say oh we're losing this fight now i use cosmic radiance this game is over at the point oh no maybe caught out right here shockwave the haymaker comes out we'll be able to chunk out the oriana and 
prepares for a little bit, but that is a dead jungler in right now. Yeah. This man advantage should allow him to walk this one in. That's really unfortunate from the side of Doggy. They did have some wards over in the uh, their top jungle, which is why they thought it was safe. But I mean, Callisto also had wards in their jungle and just got the wraparound of them. Very good collapse right now. They're going to pick up this inhibitor for free. Doggy, they know that they can't really try and defend their base uh, with one member down. And keep Brown Q not going to uh, land. But Callisto, they're playing this. Uh, very well. They're playing it very safe. You know, they don't. Right? Yep, exactly. They know that they've got such a huge lead that they don't need to be making any risks, right? So for them, you can see over in the top side, uh, the blue jungle. They've got those very good wards down, and they saw a set walking the jungle. They're like, oh, okay. If we see the opportunity to get those small advantages, we're gonna take it. Otherwise, uh, it's not gonna be worth it because we're already so far ahead. So it's just very good play and very good decision making from them. Pause coming in. Hopefully, we find out what's going on soon. Uh, it might just be resolved already, but uh, hopefully, we do know. And, uh, can see the players. We do have them like uh, on their own individual setups, and we can see them through the cameras. Like we were saying earlier, they are being super methodical right now. Callisto doesn't want to drop or lose any advantages right now. Hopefully we jump back in soon. Can hear typing, which usually means R R R let's go, you know. <laughs> or G G G go yeah. go go. In the best case scenario, worst case scenario they're just like right now saying, Oh, my whoever disconnected or whatever the technical issue is. I like how, like, for scrims, there are the regional differences, right? I think here, like, most people type R, I th but I think in the past, or in some other countries as well, people type G right. for go, but then when you type G, 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 it just <laughs> looks like G, G <laughs> in chat. What type in Korea do you know? I feel like you would have some weird insight knowledge about this. Uh, what do they type? Maybe this type of character, oh, I can't remember. Like it's a Korean character, right? Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know, maybe they use the alphabet as I say that a great shockwave is going to catch all five members and this is a reactionary ultimate, which means that they should not be long for this world. Now the Cosmic Radiance buys some space for the set to get some damage down, but yeah, this is a almost lost fight you have to think as they walk it in. They don't have the Baron buff anymore and they should be looking to siege down on the top inhibitor turret. Stun coming through from Mickey does absolutely nothing as the Scare of the Week will push him back and here comes the Slicing Maelstrom. Kenny flashes out and walks back in and what are you doing because now you're getting caught out and the stun coming through means that they will be able to find all the kills that they need. Give the Quadra over to Boozy Life because she's been playing excellently this game but no, Scumbag Vicky, the ADC is going to take the ace and with that guys, I believe Callisto come out ahead of this grudge match through what appears to be a rather definitively, uh, definitive performance, they will be able to pick this one up. Yeah, Callisto absolutely in control of this game too from start to finish, starting with the first blood that they managed yeah. to get off of set from uh, just the fact that set walked into a bush versus uh, yeah. five members uh, uh. from Team Callisto. But that's going to be uh, game number two. Yeah. Uh, Callisto will be going up against Corgi's butt mm -hmm. uh, over in game three. Corgi's butt, of course, uh, they did lose to Asterix yesterday, yeah. so they will be low looking to make it into the grand finals to try and be the Singapore representatives, whereas a team at Callisto playing all the way from the lower bracket today will be looking to go for the miracle run through yeah. the entirety of the and lower bracket. I know we have a ton of Callisto fans in the chat. We saw a lot of like Mandarin Ming type because Callisto originally was in mm -hmm. Taiwanese sort of org and now they're in Singapore. So uh, I'm sure all of the fans are just rooting for them to make it all the way into the finals and maybe play Asterix, we don't know yet. But if you guys are interested to see how Callisto performs, do stay tuned to the stream, but for now we will be going for a short break. When we come back, we'll have the next set of matches up for you very soon.